here's the thing, just one drink a day might be enough for you to sleep poorly one night and wake up a little bit irritable the next morning. And when you wake up a little bit irritable the next morning, maybe you leave the house a couple minutes late. Maybe you're not as productive at work because of that one little drink that's making you just a little bit irritable. And because you're just a little bit irritable, you seek refuge in sugary foods. And because you seek refuge in sugary foods to give you a temporary high, all of a sudden, your insulin levels are being spiked, you're storing fat, and because you're storing fat, you're getting fatter. And because you're getting fatter, you start to drink more. It just compounds itself to make huge, big, broader issues. Hello, and welcome back to episode number 127 of High Intensity Health Radio. It's your host, Mike Munzel, and I'm super honored and grateful that you're with us. Today, we're live with James Swanick. He is a former New York-based ESPN anchor on SportsCenter and author of Insider Journalism Secrets. So today, we're going to talk about why you should ditch booze and his 30-day no-alcohol challenge and blue light blocking glasses, which as soon as James starts talking, you'll see his glasses and, and why those are important for helping you to optimize your sleep and recovery uh, and hormone production. And uh, some of the benefits, we're going to talk about the benefits of going alcohol free. So, so James, let's maybe start there. What, what uh, sort of lifestyle tips or strategies or journeys uh, got you into wanting to help people better understand the benefits of ditching alcohol? Look, I was a social drinker. I'm, a, I'm Australian, you can tell from my accent. And in Australia, the culture there is very much just drink to have fun, drink to socialize. You get drunk on your 18th birthday party, your 21st, you drink beer when you watch sport, you have wine over a romantic dinner, you drink champagne to celebrate. It's kind of like just ingrained in our culture that that's what you do. And, uh, you know, it kind of caught up with me in my mid-30s. I was like, I'm just tired of feeling tired all the time. You know, I was. it wasn't that I was a, an alcoholic. It was I was a good social drinker. I drink during the week and then on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, I might drink a lot more. On a Sunday afternoon, I might drink a lot and it just caught up. You know, I put on some weight, like probably 30 pounds uh, over the course of a couple of years. I was tired. I was irritable. I looked weathered. My skin was dry and I was just like, man, I got to take a break here. And uh, that's what I did. Yeah, I love it. Now, this transition is very hard if you're a social drinker because a lot of social activities, you know, revolve around alcohol. And so, uh, you know, for, that's been a challenge for me. And this is a new, new uh, you know, learning experience for me. So, so what sort of tips and how can we shorten that learning curve and, and help people really kind of, uh, do we avoid those situations entirely? Do we get a little wine and just pretend that we're drinking it? Like, what can we do if we're in those, you know, for people that work in a social situation where, you know, happy hours are part of their business, for example? Yeah, I mean, I, I never avoid social situations, right? I, the first thing you do is got to get your mindset right. And that is like the gift and the pleasure is not drinking. It's not the reward. The reward is not drinking alcohol. The reward is not drinking alcohol. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, when you quit drinking or when you, even when you just reduce drinking, what happens is, is that you sleep better, your skin looks better, you have more energy, you have more clarity, okay? So knowing that... You can, you can settle in on the fact that not drinking is better than drinking. So when you then go out into social situations, okay, you can then just commit to saying, I'm going to continue to give myself this gift of not drinking. So a little thing that I do when I go out to a social situation is beforehand, I'll say to myself, I'm going to have the most fun at this gathering. I'm going to have the most fun at this party. And I'm going to do it while sipping on a soda water or a water or whatever. And so I'll go out and I will literally just order soda water or water with a piece of lime and some ice. And I will then just engage people. Hey, Mike, how you doing? I'm James. What's your, um, what's your story? What are you passionate about? Hey, have you met my friend, Tim? Tim, you got to meet Vanessa. Vanessa, have you met Tim? And you just become this social animal, if you like, this person who's just fluid and fun and carefree and is not going, oh my God, I'm not drinking. Oh my God, are people going to look at me as if I'm not drinking? Oh my God, I should just go and sit in the corner here. Everyone else is having fun and I'm not having fun. I mean, it is a preposterous idea that you cannot have fun, socialize, network, be charming, be funny, be confident without alcohol. It just is. 
That's a wonderful point. And what's interesting in my, again, this has been a short period of time, about two weeks here, uh, that I made this commitment and uh, the effects get better and better over time in terms of mental clarity, the, um, the amount of deep sleep and, and then staying lean. But also when you are in those social situations, you realize that you're not really missing out because you're talking to your friends and you can tell they're starting to get a little buzzed from, from the wine or the booze, whatever it may be. And you're like, oh my gosh, you're not even really understanding what I'm saying to you. And you're kind of dozing off and incoherent. So that adds kind of a little bit momentum. So for folks listening, if you're even considering this, I think you know the effects get better over time. And maybe you can speak to that, James, because you've worked with a lot of people and you know, maybe you have some stories you want to share about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I look, I created this program called 30 Day No Alcohol Challenge. And I put hundreds of people through that um, who came to me saying, I'm a social drinker. I drink too much. I want to take a break. But I, the longest I've gone without drinking is like seven days. And that was because I was sick in 2011 or whatever. And so what I do is I really hold their hand through it and give them accountability. I send them a daily video with a little tip on what to say when your friends are saying to you, go on, just have one drink or what to drink instead uh, of reaching for that glass of wine or reaching for that beer or th activities that you can do that don't involve alcohol. Okay, so uh, hundreds of people have gone through that. People lose weight. I, I mean, look, just to go back to my story, just as an example, I, I uh, had a hangover on uh, in March of 2010. I was in Austin, Texas. And that was when I said, you know what, enough's enough. I'm gonna take a 30 day break. Uh, I lost 13 pounds of fat in 30 days just from not drinking. I also slept better. Uh, my conversations with better with, with other people were so much better. Like you were just mentioning before, like you're talking to friends and they're kind of nodding off because they're having a few drinks. What I found is that conversations were deeper. They were, they were more uh, positive in nature. They were less trivial. I started attracting a much nicer uh, or much more interesting type of, of person into my life. Um, it wasn't like I deliberately set out to avoid my friends who, who kept drinking. It's just I just naturally became interested in health, fitness, nutrition, spirituality. And so all of a sudden, when you're interested in those things, you start attracting people who are interested in health, nutrition, fitness, and spirituality. Mm -hmm. um, romantic relationships just exploded like w far from women thinking that I was like a recovering alcoholic and you know trying to avoid me like the plague they were actually really very impressed by my self-discipline that I was just choosing not to drink it wasn't that I had a problem it's just I'm just I can drink if I want I'm just choosing not to and look how social I am look how much fun I'm having without it um, you know it's it really is people who do this I never say you have to quit drinking forever. I just say quit drinking for 30 days so you can get a glimpse of what it's like. And then afterwards, you can go back to drinking. But most people who go through my 30 day no alcohol challenge program, when they do go back to drinking, it's at a far reduced rate. Maybe they'll have the occasional drink here and there, then certainly not drinking as a habit like they were before. Mm -hmm. And and so let's talk about that occasional drink from just, you know, breaking this success, you know, this momentum, right? So you have all this momentum and all these health benefits and will one glass of wine set you back and will that be get another glass of wine? And then what about, you talked about the health benefits of meditation and, and all the fitness and attracting the right kind of people. You know, a lot of healthy people, I mean, let's face it, the Napa Valley and wine tasting and wine is a big industry. And so can people sometimes sip on a little wine just you know, if they enjoy the wine, like maybe talk to us about this after they go through the challenge and kind of get the initial detox going. Sure. Listen, um, look, if you enjoy the taste of wine, then, uh, and it's not a habit, then sure, it's okay. Go ahead and, and drink wine. If you enjoy the occasional beer, sure, go ahead and have the occasional beer. But, okay, and this is a big but, and I actually, I actually gave this talk at Dave Asprey's Bulletproof Conference in Los Angeles uh, last year. And it was called, is one drink a day slowly killing you? Um, and here's the thing. Just one drink a day might be enough for you to sleep poorly one night and wake up a little bit irritable the next morning. And when you wake up a little bit irritable the next morning, maybe you leave the house a couple minutes late. Maybe you're not as productive at work. Maybe because you're not as productive at work, you're not getting a promotion and making more money. Maybe you're not focusing on your business as much as you should, so you're not making much as much money. Maybe you snap at your kids or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your husband or your wife because 
of that one little drink that's making you just a little bit irritable. And because you're just a little bit irritable, you seek refuge in sugary foods. And because you seek refuge in sugary foods to give you a temporary high, all of a sudden, your insulin levels are being spiked, you're storing fat, and because you're storing fat, you're getting fatter. And because you're getting fatter, you start to drink more because you think it might relieve your emotional pain. And because you drink more, you eat more, and then you become more irritable and more crappy and more overweight, and you get fired and you lose money and you're not as productive. And you get where I'm going here, right? Like you can just keep going. And it all stems back from one simple nightly glass of wine or beer. That drink that you have when you come home from work each day and you just reach for the bottle and you pour that seemingly innocent glass of wine and you have that drink but because you have the drink maybe you have a dessert with it and you put on just a little bit of extra weight and your sleep is just a little bit affected and then you're just a little bit irritable the next day it just compounds itself to make huge big broader issues so to answer your initial question mike listen if you genuinely like the taste of wine and beer have it on occasion but just really question is a habit of drinking really serving you because from my experience it holds you back love it james and as you were sitting there talking about during that last piece it reminded me of a great book called the compound effect by darren hardy and he talks about that how these small little steps have they build and have iterations on one another over time and so it's really important now a, a, one of those small little steps and we talked about you mentioned spirituality and that's an, another area that i've been exploring meditating doing heart math and things like that what i find is that the better or more active and proficient i become at meditating that need for you know taking the edge off with alcohol kind of goes away and so maybe let's talk about this goes hand in hand and conversely after a night of drinking you know for example it's very hard to meditate the next day and get into that meditative right. state so they kind of conflict with another so do you have any uh, you know feedback or advice on that yeah so when you when you reduce or quit drinking you start to naturally get into other healthy things like meditation for example so what I do now is um, Listen, we're all going to be stressed, okay? We're all going to have elements of stress. It's not just because you quit alcohol all of a sudden you're not stressed, but you're not as stressed, absolutely. But what I've done now is I incorporate 10 minutes of daily meditation into my life. Um, I can't do any more. I'm too ADD for that, quite frankly. Um, I have this app called Headspace, um, and every morning now my routine is I, I wake up and I do 10 minutes of headspace, which is daily meditation. I then reach for a gratitude journal, which asks me three questions, which is what are three things that you're most grateful for? And it just forces me to write down things like, I'm grateful for the bed that I slept in last night. I'm grateful for the fact that my parents are still healthy. I'm grateful for the fact that I'm working with really creative people. I'm grateful for my podcast, The James Swanick Show, which has a million and a half downloads in such a short time. I'm grateful for all the people who follow me on my Instagram and YouTube. Like just little things like that. It just starts you off on this day where you're grateful for things. Now that gratitude then extends into the day where your stress levels are very much reduced. Now, most people say they want to drink at the end of a long day, okay? And most people say, oh, I want to reach for a drink. I'm just, I just need a wine to take the edge off. When you are grateful in the morning, when you write in a gratitude diary, when you practice just 10 little minutes of meditation, it's amazing how you don't feel you need that drink at the end of the day. It's amazing that, first of all, your stress levels are, are, are practically halved, depending on who you are and your circumstances. But either way, your stress levels are diminished. And then secondly, because you're in this, you're meditating, because you're healthier, you're more inclined to want to meet someone for a hike or go to the gym, do a kickboxing class or do some yoga or go to, a, I'm going to a meditation class tonight. I'm here in Los Angeles at the moment. Friends coming to pick me up at 6.30 and we're going to a meditation class. Someone who wrote a book about it. Love That's it. a cool, fun activity. I'm not going to a bar to take the edge off my day because I had to talk to you, Mike, on this damn podcast. <laughs> I'm like, it was so stressful today. I had to do a podcast interview with Mike. It was really, it was a nightmare. Give me a beer. Give me a wine. Yeah. No, I'm just like, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy all the time. I'm just going to go out and do a meditation course or just catch up with a friend. So like I said, when you quit or reduce drinking, you start to get into these other things. And when you start to get into those other things like meditation, health, fitness, exercise, you're less inclined to want to drink anyway. I love that advice. And, and one of the 
uh, apps that I use, James, is, is called Muse. I don't know if you've heard about it. It's a little bit more cumbersome than Headspace, but it's a band and it's a quantitative EEG. And so what I found is after drinking, your EEG, so your neurological noise gets really noisy. So there's a lot of static in there. And so yeah. after when you when you don't drink, it's like you have get these really clear neurological patterns. And so that's it's pretty pretty fascinating stuff. So, um, but people are, pro you mentioned routines and let's, let's talk about light now because light, uh, getting light during the day and avoiding it at night is one of, one of the routines that we talk about here and you're wearing a pair of glasses. Folks might be wondering what, what you're wearing there. And, uh, I'll just preface this conversation with no one wants to wear these blue light blocking glasses. <laughs> so my clients don't like these. So, so talk about what you're wearing and why they're important. Yeah, so I'm wearing blue blocking glasses. This is my own brand, which are called Swannies. And, um, you know, about a year ago, a friend of mine told me about the danger of blue light that's emitted from your cell phone, from your computer screen, from TVs and laptops. If you're watching this on YouTube right now and it's nighttime, then blue light that's coming is coming out of your screen and it's keeping you awake at night. It's disrupting your sleep patterns. If you're watching this on this cell phone, you've got blue light that's being emitted from the display, okay? Every dis electronic display has blue light. Now, it's fine in the daytime because you're supposed to be awake in the daytime, but at nighttime, that blue light is keeping your brain alert and it's, con it's tricking your body into thinking that it's daytime. But you want your body to think that it's nighttime so it starts to create a hormone called melatonin, which then helps you to sleep. So what these what these glasses do is that they block the blue light, okay? So you wear uh, blue locking glasses. Like I said, these are called Swannies by Swanwick Sleep. That's my last name, Swanwick. Um, the pair that Mike just held up, uh, I consider to be very unsightly and ugly and not stylish. Just show them again, Mike. Yeah, yeah I'll show off to speak so you guys can see this. And and while folks are looking at this, and the reason why I have these here, uh, they're inexpensive, but and I recommend them to a lot of folks that listen into the podcast and clients that I work with. But it, the buy-in to get people to wear these at night is is really challenging, and that's when we want folks to wear them uh, because you know people are not going to change their routines like like James and we, we could talk about this and getting candles and lava lamps and stuff. You and I probably do, but a lot of people are not going to do. That. they still want to watch TV and you know get on the iPad and the iPhone and that's fine so long as you can either use app flux or get some glasses like this but again the the compliance is not good at all so that's why I love your product and your brand and, and wanted to bring you on the show to talk about this because I think our audience can really benefit from this yeah thank you look first of all you must block the blue light okay you can use an app called flux on your laptop which is free and it's really really good that'll withdraw the blue light out of your screen um, which is terrific um, second thing you can do is not look at electronics at nighttime, but let's face it, nobody's going to do that because we're all addicted. We're all addicts to our cell phones and to our laptops. Uh, the third thing you can do is wear blue blocking glasses. Now, the reason that I like my pair and I design my pair is that they're relatively stylish, right? I'm just vain enough that I didn't want to wear those ugly glasses that you showed out to a restaurant in a bar. In fact, I remember the very moment where I had the idea for these glasses. I was watching Mad Men, uh, repeats of Mad Men, the AMC show, and uh, I was wearing glasses not dissimilar to the one that you just showed me, those really ugly kind of workman glasses. And a friend of mine called me and said, hey, we're just around the corner. Um, uh, do you want to come and meet us? We're in a restaurant. And I said, oh, yeah, I'd love to. And then I was thinking, damn, I don't want to go out wearing these damn ugly glasses. There's going to be pretty girls there. I'm going to look like an idiot. People are going, what the hell are we thinking? What the hell are you wearing? But I didn't want to take them off either because I didn't want to subject myself to, to light at nighttime. And so I said to myself, I wonder if I could design my own pair, which was st just stylish enough that you could wear them out to a restaurant, meet nice people, and people would just say, oh, they're interesting. Tell me about those rather than what are those ugly things you're wearing and why are you wearing sunglasses at night? So I basically put the, the blue blocking lens into a stylish frame. You wear these at uh, nighttime about an hour, an hour and a half before you go to sleep. Um, it blocks the blue light. Um, what that does is that it, it starts uh, helping your body to create melatonin. Then when you take them off and go to sleep, you can go into that deep REM sleep almost right away versus you sort of like tossing and turning and, you know, taking an hour and a half to get into that deep sleep, deep mm. sleep mode. So, so yeah, I'm listen, I got to send you a pair now that I know that you've got those really ugly pairs. 
I'm gonna have to send you a pair, Mike. Yeah. Because my wife has a my wife has a pair of the st stylish ones. Yeah, and so that's she. Is, okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, but um, yeah, because James, I travel a lot, and so yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna wear these suckers in an airport. There's there's no way. I mean, not even that I know anyone in an airport, but it's just you know they kind of fall off. They don't sit on your head right. Um, so I think that this is an awesome program. So so you an awesome product. You've been doing this for a while, James. What are the health benefits have you not noticed uh, since really taking the blue light blocking at night seriously? Yeah, well, first and foremost, it's sleep. Um, my sleep just improved dramatically as soon as I started doing this a, a year ago. Um, I my sleep used to be okay. Like I'd still get seven, sometimes eight hours, which sounds pretty good, right? I mean, that sounds healthy. But what it was, it wasn't like the best quality sleep. And um, there's an app, I think it's called Sleep Cycle. I was actually like um, measuring how many times I would toss and turn in the night. And it was pretty significant, even though I was still in bed for seven or eight hours. So I used to sit up at night and look at my cell phone and type in my Instagram and send text messages and emails and watch TV, uh, not knowing how bad it was. As soon as I started using blue light, uh, blue blockers, to block the blue light and, and I started tracking my sleep again, I, I didn't toss and turn nearly as much. It was like maybe a two or three times. I'd get up to use the bathroom once at like five o'clock in the morning instead of like sort of waking up and getting up a couple of times during the night. Um, I fell asleep quicker. Uh, I started to lose a little bit of fat. Now, I can't say for absolute certain that I lost the fat because I blocked the blue light. All I can say is that my sleep improved dramatically. And as a result of that, whether it was from the blue blocking glasses or, or you know, exercising more or whatever, I lost a little bit of extra weight. I had more energy. I was a lot more focused. Um, and I got, you know, everything was just, was just better in my life. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if, you, if you're sitting up at night looking at your cell phone in the dark or on your electronics and computers, as let's face it, we all are, you really got to grab yourself a pair of these or get flux or, um, you know, do or just cut out electronics altogether, quite frankly. Yeah. And is that something that you've adopted at this point? I mean, I know you have the glasses, but do you make a routine of, of, of even though you're wearing the glasses to, 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 to minimize a conscious effort to minimize TV and computers and stuff? Or how does that work in your lifestyle? Yeah, I do. I mean, look, I'm an entrepreneur, though, so I'm, I'm kind of addicted to my business. And so I do find myself, uh, I don't know if your viewers can see, but I have a stand up desk behind me over there. The only reason I'm not standing up to do this interview is because my fancy microphone is, is, is uh, Ooh, the whiteboard. I love it. Yeah, so I've got my stand-up desk over there. And so I will stand up most of the day. Um, and uh, at nighttime, if I'm working, I'll put on my pair of swannies uh, and I'll, you know, I'll work. Now, having said that, you've got to have a life, right? I don't want to be addicted to my business all the time. Uh, I can only sell as many swannies as I can or talk to as many people but, you know, with my businesses as possible. I like to get out and meet people. And, and, and hang with friends and do cool things. I go to Soho House up here in Los Angeles and meet friends for dinner and stuff like that. But um, so I do try to limit my, my computer use by not being in the house and going and doing other cool stuff. But when I'm in my place uh, and I'm not doing anything social that night, you will tend to find me using electronics, working on my business. And that's when I put on my Swanee's glasses uh, which block the blue light and um, you know, I keep them on right until after I switch the light off in my bedroom and then I take them off. I don't take them off to expose my eyes to light for another minute. I'll clean, brush my teeth, use the bathroom, get ready for bed, uh, go to my uh, bedroom light switch, switch off the lights and then remove, then remove the glasses. Mm, I love that tip. That's really great. Yeah, um, this is a problem that people need to realize it. You know, what we're talking about here is these um, electronic emitting devices, whether it's lights above us or, or iPads, computers, cell phones. There's a lot of research on this now. Like this was kind of like a theoretical thing about five years ago, but now we have randomized placebo controlled uh, studies published in well reputable journals. So folks, if you're listening to this, there's hard science to support what we're doing here. So that's what's, what's really cool, James. Now, Let's talk about the converse. So, light I, just, I just want to clarify one thing. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just want to clarify. I'm actually wearing these at the wrong time. Like it's daytime. You can see it's daytime. So you shouldn't really wear these at daytime. I'm really only wearing them just to illustrate the point and give you the visual. They're for wearing at nighttime. And I just want to clarify that. And also just to, to reiterate your point as well, Mike, 
Um, professional athletes are now using um, glasses like these to to really block the blue light. NFL teams, college, American college football teams, uh, Olympic skiers, they're using blue light technology to make sure that they're getting the, the most effective sleep so they can perform at their optimum level. Sorry mm -hmm. for interrupting, Mike. No, no, not at all. I mean, in fact, I mean, what you were saying, I was going to, you know, add a little bit to that is, um, so it's great to block light at night so that you get the best sleep you can, best boost in growth hormone and so forth. But then let's talk about the daytime, like you, mm -hmm. like you just kind of hit on and, and the importance of waking up, getting some natural light. Like what is that doing to our circadian rhythm? Yeah. So I'm going to take these off now because okay. in daytime you should not be wearing them. Okay. So, um, your circadian rhythm wants to know it's your circadian rhythm is your internal body clock and it wants to know that it's daytime and it wants to know when it's nighttime okay so if you want to improve your sleep in general then first thing in the morning you should get out and let the sun hit your face hit your skin just to let your circadian rhythm know you know what it's daytime what most people do and they don't even realize they're making this mistake is that They'll wake up and they'll stay indoors under fluorescent lights in the morning. They'll get ready. Maybe they'll walk to their car and they'll get like 10 seconds of light. Then they'll drive to work. And especially in the winter months where there's not much sunlight, um, they'll go inside uh, and there's fluorescent lights. And by the time they leave work, like 5.36, it's dark again. So we're not getting that much sunlight, especially in the, in the winter months. So um, this is a bad thing. Your body needs sunlight. And in order for you to, to help you sleep later on at night, your circadian rhythm needs to be in check. So one little tip for sleeping well, go and get sunlight first thing in the morning, even if it's just for five minutes. I'll sometimes just stand out there on my balcony and just stand in the sun and force myself to stand there just so I can get the sunlight. Later on at night, my sleep is going to be a lot better. Um, in fact, I don't know if, if you're comfortable with me saying this, but if you want to have like seven ways to sleep better, then you can, if you go to a website, swanwicksleep.com, I actually do send you a, a free book. It's called seven ways to, to sleep better. I didn't, sorry if that's not the appropriate thing to do, but I wanted to just, you know, like that's just one tip and I explain that more in that book. Um, and then magnesium is another way. Um, that, to help you sleep, doing heavy exercises, exercise in the morning is it helps you sleep at night as well. There's all these little tips um, that you can do, but yeah, sunlight in the day and blue blocking glasses at night are the main thing. Mm -hmm. I, I love where this conversation is going, James, because there, there's so many things that people can do that are absolutely free. Ditching alcohol, you're going to save money. Getting better sleep, you're going to feel better, be more productive. Getting sunlight, it doesn't cost anything to get sunlight, of course. Right. I mean, if you live in Alaska during the winter, that may be challenging amount to fly, but you know, a uh, majority of people can get natural sunlight for, for free. And what's powerful you know, is you know, people are looking for these pills and these supplement programs and these workout regimes and these little small steps that we're, taking, we're talking about here have a huge effect. And like you mentioned, NFL football teams and Olympic athletes are doing this stuff because they know how it affects recovery. So it can really improve your health if you're listening here, just trying to lose a little belly fat or uh, improve your blood sugar. So James, we've talked about a lot of things. Before we go to some final questions here, is there anything that we miss that you want to share with our audience? Well, look, I mean, the, the main thing really is uh, if we're talking about the alcohol, uh, please understand, I am not saying that alcohol is the devil and that alcohol is the worst possible thing that you could, you could ever drink. But if you're drinking habitually, that means a drink a night, that's all it means, then that may be holding you back from living your optimum life, okay? So just explore that. And if you do my 30 day no alcohol challenge program as hundreds of people around the world have done. I'm not going to tell you not, I'm not going to tell you quit drinking forever. I'm just going to tell you quit drinking for 30 days because when you do, you're going to feel amazing, look better. Your skin will be nice and glowing and fresh. Your friends will compliment you on your looks. You'll be more productive. You'll have more clarity. You'll sleep better and life will just never seem the same again. Even if you go back to drinking at a reduced rate. The other thing in terms of the glasses, like the Swannies glasses, this is real, okay? This is going to be huge in the next five years. You watch. This is the next big health concern. All these electronics we're using, like the Wi-Fi that's coming into our brain is going to be an issue. You remember when smoking was just like so common? You know, I was talking about the TV show Mad Men before. It was just everyone was smoking cigarettes until like season two or three where it was like, oh, my God, there's all these health warnings about cigarettes and they had to start stopping advertising it again. 
Same thing with screens. The screen that you're watching me talk on right now is emitting blue light, which is affecting your health. This is real. This is going to happen. So grab yourself a pair of Swannies, and if not mine, then just you know, just grab any kind of blue blocking system that you can, um, and uh, make sure you get daily uh, sunlight and uh, and exercise. And if you do that, you're going to have a lot healthier, happier life. I promise you. Mm -hmm. I believe that 100%. I've been doing that. James, I love that. And one thing that I wanted to mention, we were sitting there talking about this, just try it for 30 days, no alcohol. One tip that I learned, and I was a little bit reluctant to do this, is by making the private public, right? So doing some things on Instagram and saying, you know, ditching the wine and having tea or ditching the wine, having chamomile and telling my friends that I'm not drinking. And at first I was a little nervous to say that because I'm like, well, what if I have that glass of wine or that scotch that they're offering? Then they're going to be like, wait, you're, you know, kind of that, that cognitive dissonance, right? You're going against your word. So, but when you make the private public, you tend to make better decisions that are congruent with that decision. So speaking of Instagram, you're really active on Instagram. I know that's something that you do. Have you found success with people that are more active on social media versus not when it comes to ditch and booze? You know, it's funny. I, I've got, I've got about 20, almost 20,000 followers on Instagram now, just from me talking about not drinking. And, uh, it's insane. Like how engaged people are on that. Um, People message me all the time, like, um, I've, I've quit alcohol, I'm on day eight. Oh my God, I'm on day 13, I feel amazing, it's incredible. There's something powerful about putting it out there into the world and having other people, whether it's strangers or friends or colleagues, hold you accountable. So in my um, official 30 Day No Alcohol Challenge program, there's a closed Facebook group. And so when you join my program, you go into that closed Facebook group and you can go in there and you have to say why you're here. Like uh, a lot of people say, I'm here because I need to lose weight. I'm here because I'm cranky and irritable all the time. Or I'm here because uh, I'm sick of just feeling mediocre. And I'm, I'm here because I realize that drinking is a habit. And then from there, everyone comes in and supports you. You've got this. You can do it. It's awesome. And then people say, I'm on day eight. Oh, my God, my sleep is better. I feel amazing. This is incredible. Or I'm on day 29. And oh, my God, I just took my kids out for the first time in like months. We had such an amazing time. It's so great to wake up on a Saturday and Sunday morning and not feel hungover and be fresh and energized. Like you said, there's something very powerful in just announcing it and 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 saying this is what i'm going to do please support me in my endeavors and then when other people come in and support you you feel like you're being held accountable in a very supportive way and that just keeps you on track mm -hmm. so whether you do do it yourself the 30 day no alcohol challenge like or whether you do it through my official program at 30 day no alcohol challenge.com just do it but announce it if you feel comfortable enough to do it tell people who will support you. And if they don't support you, well, I would encourage you to get new friends because <laughs> come on, yeah. come on. You need to have supportive friends around you, right? Right. Yeah, that's a really good good parting of advice here. So uh, James, really enjoyed talking with you. Now we have three final questions that we ask every guest on the show. And, and the first one was, and you mentioned magnesium. And so this has to do with supplements, whole foods, or herbs or botanical. So if you're going to be stranded on a desert island, vitamin D is covered. You can only bring one supplement with you. What would that herb, nutrient, botanical, or supplement be and why? Man, that's a, such a great question. Wow. I would probably go with fish oil. Uh, it's just been proven to, be, to really, really help you and keep you healthy and keep everything in check. So I would probably take some fish oil with me in the, in the capsule form. Uh, that's a supplement, right? Fish oil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah, that's I'd take perfect. fish oil. It's a good, good source of uh, healthy fats, omega-3s and omega-6s. Yeah. Uh, although having said that, if I, was on, if I was strapped on an island, I'd probably be eating a lot of fish. So I'd probably get a lot of fish oil anyway, wouldn't I? Just from eating, from eating the fish. Uh, in which case, I might, uh, I would probably take anything that um, removes estrogen from my body. So like an estrogen flush. Uh, I won't, there is a brand I use, but I won't say what it is just cause I'm not affiliated with them, but anything that sort of cuts the estrogen out of, uh, out of your life. I'm a man, obviously I want to develop natural testosterone, um, would probably be a supplement I'd use as well. Right. So something like dim or christen or something like that to kind of push. Yeah, exactly. Anything that just flushes out, um, uh, you know, a lot of extra, uh, estrogen and chemicals. Like we're putting a lot of parabens on ourselves when we use hairspray or, or spray deodorants or we're putting moisturizers on our face. A lot of parabens and uh, parabens and chemicals get into your body then. The estrogen flush really helps to just clean those toxins out.
Yeah, that's that's fantastic. So you kind of mentioned uh, the next question, James, is about morning routine, and you did mention uh, you know what you do in the morning. But let's kind of summarize that in a, in a nice bundle here. So when you get up, you know you're very successful. You have multiple businesses it's here, and I think that people will find that very impressive, right? You're working very hard. So how do you structure the first part of your day? Because you know, we want to know kind of what you're doing so that people can be motivated and maybe inspired by your routine. Yeah, well, I'll just tell you what I did this morning, if you want. I, I woke up uh, at 6.30. I uh, went up and used the bathroom, not to be too specific, but, you know, I want to be truthful and honest. Um, I went back and sat on the end of my bed where I did the 10 minutes of headspace. Uh, then I pulled out my, uh, which is the meditation, and then I pulled out my uh, five, it's called the five-minute journal, the gratitude diary, and I wrote in it for two minutes and two minutes only. I then went and sat on my uh, sofa where I read for 30 minutes, which was the, uh, I read The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg, who's a New York Times bestselling author, talking about habits. Um, I then uh, got up and went to the gym, went to the Crunch Gym on Sunset Boulevard, which is walking distance from my house, about a mile. Uh, while I was there, I was listening to uh, Ty Lopez, uh, who's a mentor and coach of mine in terms of business. I was listening to one of his his programs, and um, and then I came back and I had a cup of tea and some water. I took a shower, and then I got up to my standing desk up there and uh, I started doing work. A yeah. um, little bit of email. Um, I have a virtual assistant in the Philippines who who sorts through my email while I'm sleeping and puts it nice and structured so when I wake up I, I know what emails I should look at and which I can just leave till later um, and uh, yeah and then I proceeded to, to work on the Swanee's glasses had a conference call today with someone who's going to help me uh, market these these things and re reach and help as many people as possible and uh, now I'm talking to you and your fine uh, viewers and listeners I love it. Yeah, thanks for going into the detail. I think people will, will dig that. So uh, final question here, James, is if you were to bump shoulders with Barack Obama or a future president in an elevator, and they said, James, you know, you're talking with all these entrepreneurs and, and people in the health space and, and so forth. What sort of health tip would you want me to know about so I can maybe implement some policy or at least share with Americans that you feel would reduce health reduce healthcare expenditures and improve the health of Americans and possibly the world? What would you tell them in a short 30-second soundbite? Man, that's such a great question as well. Uh, I would just say education on the dangers of sugar uh, is the most important thing. And 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 in more in more um, detail, packaging of all common foods. That's the single biggest issue because you've got these cereals that are saying low fat and these yogurts that are saying low fat and zero calories. Yet it's just jammed with all of this crap that is just spiking our insulin levels and making us want to eat more crap. So I would say President Obama or future president, please, please, please educate people on the misleading marketing that people are doing, that the food companies are doing on the packaging of their foods. Please educate people on how much sugar is actually in a low sugar or a low fat uh, food that you see advertised on the shelves or in the or in the refrigerators, because a lot of times these people that say low fat and low sugar and organic is jammed with absolute crap that's not going to help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great advice. So stick to real food. And uh, <laughs> sorry, thank you. I'm, that was much more eloquent and succinct than my version, Mike. Yeah, stick to real food, please. <laughs> right, right. But people don't want to do that. They want the gluten free. They want the low fat. They oh. want all this, right? Oh. So. I eat paleo 85% of the time. That's what I do. So if it had if it had a face, for the most part, I'll eat it, right? It was an animal. I know that sounds a little crude and crass, but paleo is essentially you eat animals and you eat uh, uh, fruits, vegetables, and good fats. If you do that 85% of the time, man, you're going to be so healthy. You get, life is going to be so good. And vegans might be watching going, that's crap. Oh, my God, I can't believe you're saying that. That's okay. Not every diet suits every person, right? There's different diets that suit different people's genetic makeup. Paleo works for me. I eat 85% of the time lean meats, vegetables, salads, good fats like avocados and healthy nuts. 15% of the time, I'll eat ice cream or some Doritos ice cream, uh, Doritos chips, because I like it. And you've got to live life just a little bit. But as long as 85% of the time I'm eating healthy and real foods, as you put it, I'm going to be a-okay. 
Yeah, I love that advice. Great tip there. So James, you mentioned a lot of uh, websites, which for our listeners listening, we're going to have that all at the show notes at highintensityhealth.com. Links to Swanee's, links to the 30 day alcohol challenge. Uh, But James, if folks are like, you know, at the gym or they're driving right now and they just want to check you out, what's the best website where folks can learn more about your work? Sure. I'll give you three websites. I don't want to give you too confusing, but um, if you want to do the 30 day no alcohol challenge, then just go to 30 day no alcohol challenge.com. Uh, if you want to check out the Swannies blue blocking glasses, just go to swanniesglasses.com. Swannies is spelled S W A N N I E S. So it's swanniesglasses.com. And if you want to reach out to me on my personal website, you can get me at James Swanick. Uh, it's actually spelled Swanwick. So it's J A M E S S W A N W I C K. And I'm on Instagram and YouTube and Twitter at James Swanick as well. Mike, thank you so much for having me. Great questions, by the way. You asked really, really good questions. Like I've done a lot of interviews and this was certainly one of the better ones. So thank you. Hey, my pleasure, James. Really appreciate you coming on the show and doing all the great work that you're doing. We'll stay in touch. And folks tuning in, uh, thank you so much for subscribing and your reviews. And again, we take the show notes for you over at highintensityhealth.com so you can check that out. So James, we'll catch up with you on another episode down the road, I'm sure. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it.